and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's a Further Pure 2 FP2 video for the Maths A level and it's on solving algebraic inequalities, the third video and final video on this topic. As always, for more help with your GCSE or A level, do check out the YouTube channel, Twitter or Google+. So we're on tutorial three. We're still doing chapter one of the FP2 course for Edexcel and it's on algebraic inequalities. And just to remind you what we've done, everything in yellow we've done, but this video we're going to do what's in green. We're going to solve inequalities involving the modulus sign. For example, the modulus of x squared subtract 1 is bigger than 2 uh, uh, multiplied by x plus 1, that type of uh, equation. So to start with, I need to talk to you about what the modulus function is. Now for the vast majority of you, who have done core 3 before, this won't be a problem. Some of you may be coming to FP2 without having done core, uh, core 3, so I'll go through it very briefly. Otherwise, I suggest you look in my core 3 playlist. So, I'm going to divide the page into two to try and explain this. Suppose we had a function, f of x. And suppose I knew its graph. And its graph looked something like this, let's say. Something like that. So that was f of x. Okay? So that's all I've done so far. I've got a function of x and I know the picture of it. Now imagine I defined a new function. Let's suppose I define something called the modulus of f of x. The modulus of the function of f of x. So I'm going to call this the modulus of f of x, right? Now I'm going to define it in the following way. I'm going to define it as follows. The modulus of f of x is two things at two different places. It's f of x, the original function, it's exactly the same as the original function, as long as the original function, its y value, had a positive value at that x point. And it's the negative of f of x if f of x was negative at that point. Okay? So let's just re say that. The modulus of f of x, well, it's just f of x, your normal function, when you know that the y number, the f of x, is bigger than zero. And it's the negative of whatever your f of x is when that f of x is actually negative. Okay? So let's try and draw the picture of this. Okay? So... I'm going to actually copy this. Right, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to drag this across here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just so we can see what's going on a little bit easier. Okay, now let's think about this. Let's move along the graph. Here is my y-axis, or y is f of x. And here's my x-axis. Now, this point here, f of x, uh, is positive. So mod f of x, this new graph which I'm going to draw maybe in red, is going to be the same thing. And all along here, they're identical to each other. Until we get to this point. At this point here, okay, f of x is negative. It's a negative number. Okay, so then we define mod f of x to be the negative of that negative number, making it positive in fact. So it ends up coming up here like this until here, where f of x is positive, so mod f of x is just the exact same. Whereas down here it's negative, and we're going to make that negative, uh, so we're going to have a negative negative which would be positive, so it's going to look like that, and then it's going to go off like that. And this graph here, uh, the red graph is the modulus of f of x. Okay, so that's it's quite a hard uh, idea to, to think about, but basically, if you know uh, that's f of x, the modulus of f of x is the same graph, but wherever the graph goes below the x-axis, you reflect it up above the x-axis. Okay, so, <clears throat> just need to talk a little bit about... Um, what mod fx is at various points. Here, where the original graph was positive, this here is exactly the same as f of x, and so is this. And actually, so is this point here. 
So at these points here, the graph, the mod f of x graph, and the f of x graph are identical to each other. However, here and here, here and here, the mod fx graph is actually the negative of the original fx graph, and the negative of the original fx graph. Okay, so you're going to have to be able to draw these pictures, and you're going to have to be able to think about what mod fx means. As I said, if this is all new to you, go to my core 3 playlist, please, to get more detail, but that's going to be enough for this particular part in the course, as I think we need to move on, and this is prerequisite knowledge. So let's have a go at doing an example. Example 1, we're going to solve the modulus of x squared subtract 4x is less than a 3. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to define a function. I'm going to define fx to just be what's inside the modulus sign. So x squared subtract 4x, which you can factorize as x, uh, x subtract 4. So if you were drawing the original fx graph, Okay, it would have roots at 0 and 4, so it would have a root at 0, 0, and a root at um, 4, 0, i.e. when y is equal to 0. Um, also, uh, it would be a quadratic, so it would look something like this. Okay, so this is the original fx graph. Now, could we talk about this point? Well, it's exactly in between x is 0 and x is 4, so it's going to certainly happen at 2. And when we sub in 2 to the original function here, we get ourselves negative 4. OK, so that's the original f of x graph. Now, the mod f of x graph is going to be this graph here. It's going to be equal, it's going to be just like that, but it's going to be reflected along here, and then it's going to go up like that here. And clearly this point here is still 0, 0, this point here is still 4, 0, but this top point here is going to be 2, positive 4 now. Okay, so I've just taken my bit of time there to draw the mod f of x graph, okay, using the original f of x graph. Now after a bit of time you're going to get good at this and you'll be able to do it straight out, but that's the mod f of x graph. Just a bit of labelling. Along this point here, the mod f of x graph is just the, the same as the original, and here it's the same as the original. But for this point here, along here, the mod f of x graph is actually equal to the negative of f of x. Okay, now we want to find where this graph that we've drawn is less than 3, so let's draw the line up uh, y is equal to 3. So where it's less than 3 is going to be here, and here, and here, and here. So we need to find this point, this point, this point, and this point here. Okay, so how are we going to find, let's, uh, how are we going to find point A, and let's call it point B. So for point A and B, the mod fx graph is the same as the original fx graph. So what we're going to solve, the original fx is this. We're going to solve for a and b, x squared subtract 4x is equal to 3. We're going to subtract 3 off both sides, x squared subtract 4x is less, uh, subtract 4x, subtract 3 is equal to 0. And then we're going to use the quadratic formula here. And when we use the quadratic formula, I'll let you do that yourself, but you get x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. Okay, so here and here we've got those two. Now for points, let's call them C and D, okay, for C and D, we're going to solve something else. Here, the, the mod fx graph is actually the negative of fx, so it's the negative of this here. So we're going to solve the negative of x squared subtract 4x is equal to 3. Okay, so we can multiply both sides by negative 1, so x squared um, subtract 4x is equal to negative 3, and x squared subtract 4x plus 3 is equal 0. Factorising that, it factorises perfectly as the follows, so therefore x is equal to 3, or x is equal to 1. So here are our following points.
This point here is going to be one of these two. It's the smallest of these, so it's going to be 2 subtract root 7. And this point here is going to be 2 plus root 7. These two points here, C and D, well, clearly C is going to be X is equal to 1 and D is going to be X is equal to 3. So now we can state our answer. So uh, where is this graph below the line Y is equal to 3? Well, it's below that for X less than 1, bigger than 2, subtract root 7. And X less than 2 plus root 7, but strictly bigger than or equal to 3. And we have ourselves our answer now for that first example. OK, let's try another example. Here's example 2. We want to solve the modulus of 3x plus x is less than or equal to 2. Now, to, to solve these modulus ones, we want uh, a function fully inside the modulus. So the easiest thing to do here, because we've got something with a modulus and another function, it's easiest to just subtract x off both sides so that we're actually solving the modulus of 3x is less than or equal to 2 subtract x. That way, the function on one side is fully has a modulus around it, the function on the other side doesn't, let's say. Okay, so this is what we're going to try and solve. So let's draw the graph for this. Okay, firstly, let's draw 2 subtract x. 2 subtract x is easy. Y is equal to 2 subtract x. It, um, if I do a bit of work up here, y is equal to 2 subtract x. If you let x equal 0, then y is 2. And if you let y be equal to 0, then x is equal to 2. So it goes through these two points here. So it goes through 2, 0 and 0, 2. And it's a straight line with a negative gradient. There we go. OK, no problem there. y is equal to 2 subtract x. Now, the modulus of 3x. Now, that's the same as the graph. Uh, let's just think about what the modulus of 3x looks like. The modulus of 3x is 3x when 3x is positive. And it's negative 3x when, uh, when bigger than or equal to 0, or negative 3x when 3x actually turns out to be negative. So, what does the line y equals 3x look like? It looks like a straight line. Okay, so this is the line here, y is equal to 3x. However, it's exactly, um, I'm going to do it in a different colour pen, I'm going to do it like this. It's exactly the line y is equal to 3x. Okay, however, when it gets negative, it actually reflects it up in the following way. Okay, let's see if I can actually make that a little bit thinner, just so it's not looking ridiculous. Okay, so that is what the graph y equals modulus of 3x looks like. So it's y equals 3x here when 3x was positive and it's y is equal to negative 3x here. Okay, so we want to find where the modulus of 3x graph is less than 2 subtract x. So we want to find uh, this region here. So in particular, we want to find that point there and that point there. So I'm going to call this point A, let's say, and point B. Now for point A, what are we going to solve? Well, we're going to solve the um, simultaneous equations. We're going to say when y is equal to 3x, and we're going to solve it when y is equal to 2 subtract x. Okay, so solving these simultaneously, we make them equal to each other, make equation 1 and equation 2 equal to each other. So you have 3x is equal to 2 subtract x, add x to both sides, 4x is 2, so x is equal to a half. So this point here is x equals a half. To find B, well that B, this line here is actually negative 3x. So what we're going to solve here is we're going to solve y is equal to negative 3x with y is equal to 2 subtract x. There are equations this time. Make, make them equal to each other. Negative 3x is 2 subtract x. Add 3x to both sides, let's say, and subtract 2. Negative 2 would be equal to 2x, and x would be equal to negative 1. So this point here is x is negative 1. Okay, so I want everything where the modulus graph is less than or equal to this. 
So I want that x is less than or equal to a half, but bigger than or equal to negative 1, and that there is my final solution. And I've done example 2. Okay, finally, um, example 3, let's have a go at this one. We're going to make our f of x, in this case, be equal to x squared subtract 19. And if we were to draw this graph, let's just draw a big version of this graph here. It's like the x squared graph, but it's shifted down 19. Okay, so it's got coordinates there um, of 0, 19, but it's exactly like the x squared graph. And that's f of x, but if we want mod f of x, mod f of x would actually look like this here, something like that. I'll just rub the back one out. And this point here would actually be equal to 0, 19 now. These two points here is when f of x would be equal to 0, it would be root 19, and negative root 19. Okay, and we want to uh, solve this inequality where it's less than uh, or equal to 5x subtract 1, so that's be 5x subtract 5 if I expand the brackets. So it crosses at negative 5 and it's got a gradient of 5. So it looks something like that, you know, something like that there. So we're looking for where this modulus graph is less than or equal to this. So in particular, we're looking for this region here. So we need to find ourselves those two intersection points, which I'll call, uh, for this point here, I'll call this point uh, A and I'll call this point B. Now for A, for point A, this here, well, this along here, we have f of x where it was already positive, f of x where it was already positive, and along here, this one here, this actually is where we reflected it, so this is where uh, it's negative f of x. So to get point A, what we're going to solve, we're going to solve f of x is equal to 5x subtract 1. So we're going to solve the simultaneous equations, y is equal to x squared subtract 19, with y is equal to 5x subtract 5. Make them equal each other, so we have 5x subtract 5 is equal to x squared subtract 19, and 0 is equal to x squared subtract 5x, and we're going to have uh, subtract 14, subtract 14, so 0 is equal to x subtract 7, x plus 2, so we're going to have x is equal to 7 and x is equal to negative 2. Now clearly at this point x is 7, not negative 2, negative 2 would be um, somewhere else. Okay, so x is equal to 7 is our answer for this one. Point B, let's move this down. To find point B, we want to solve the simultaneous equation. Y is the negative of f of x, which is negative x squared subtract 19, where that is equal to y is 5x subtract 5. So solve these simultaneously. 5x subtract 5 is equal to negative x squared subtract 19. Multiply both sides by minus 1, you would get 5 subtract 5x is equal to x squared subtract 19. And then um, making the left-hand side 0, x squared plus 5x. And then I think you would get subtract 24. And then if you try and factorise that, 0 is equal to x plus 3. So x plus 8, x subtract 3. So x is negative 8, or x is equal to 3. Now clearly at this point x is positive, so x is equal to 3. So this point here has x equal 3, this point here has x equal 7. So therefore if we want our uh, modulus to be less than or equal to that, it's going to be for the values, now we can state x less than or equal to 7, or bigger than or equal to 3, and we're done. And that's it for this particular topic. So what I'd like you to do to consolidate this, I'd like you to read chapter 1, page 4 to 7, do exercise 1b, all the questions, and exercise 1c, all the questions. If you are struggling with drawing modulus graphs, please look at my Core 3 revision playlist, that will really help you. But if you've done Core 3, this should be fairly easy for you. Thank you for watching.